Hello, some more um, ideas about Valse Triste, um, uh, left hand and uh, right hand. We're going to start with the right one, right hand uh, first. So you need you to find your A, uh, which could be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven buttons, if you're in the same place as me. Um, and obviously uh, that's a really important button to know for French music because a lot of the stuff's in A minor. Um, and the notes above that, obviously, um, geographically, it's below it, but in terms of pitch, is the C. Um, and if you haven't gathered by now, um, the Melodian buttons are really uh, well um, set out for playing chords. So that's our A minor chord. And a push in the other direction turns the A to a B, the C to a D, and the E to a G. So that's a that's a bigger leap. Always reminds you of a clown that bit. Little uh, little car horn. Um, so the reason uh, that um, sometimes the melodies are um, uh, slightly um, unintuitive is that the chords are supposed to be intuitive. So, A, middle finger. Now, the B, uh, everything's on the push, on the, everything's on the pull at the moment, but the B, if you look at it as if you were looking down at the keyboard, which I don't recommend you do too often, uh, f looks as if it should be a lower pitched note because we're working back towards the, back towards the bass end. So it looks like that note should be just a, a tiny bit lower, but it's a tiny bit higher. So sometimes looking is not your best friend. Um, and I would advise if you just sometimes think of working your way up a piano, sometimes going from the white notes to the black notes can feel like a little bit of a shift. So if you're thinking of the keyboard as one thing rather than two single rows, a single row in G and a single row in C. So um, uh, if you're thinking of uh, it as one combined keyboard, it doesn't feel so bizarre to be, to be going up in pitch even though we're fewer buttons uh, along on this set. Uh, set. I hope that makes sense. So, in fingering wise, it's um, I'm going to call this uh, three because I use my thumb quite a bit. Uh, so three, two, four. But that's actually very ergonomic. It does. It may be weird to think I'm going up three notes, but I'm using three, two, four. But it does. It feels natural. So just round and round and round with that. Until it feels natural. And if you do it on the push, you'll notice that all the notes change. Buttons are doing the same job on this hand. You may well find there's a difference in tone quality between the push and the pull, and between the outside row and the inside row, it depends on what, what melody you've got. Um, uh, that's all going up in step, but if I jump up at a button, we can't always guarantee that that finger pattern is going to be going up. Uh, one step at a time. Okay, now we've got that little um, little pattern worked out. I want to, for a moment, concentrate on the left hand. Um, so that's our A buttons. Remember, we've got two sets of Gs. That's G on the push, and that's G on the pull. So that's our A. Just the um pa pa, and then on the G. There's the A. We're just going to play and then two bars on a held note and then reverse the bellows.
So here it is, slowly. That's easy because the fingers match. So, middle fingers, pointing fingers, then you just have to use pointing finger and the ring finger for that one. So that's easy. You may have to uh, concentrate on that one. Reverse the bellows, move to G. If you run out of air, it's no big deal. Okay, um, you can either you can either start further out for the A, uh, so that you've got more room to push in, or or uh, just don't worry about it at this stage. It is something to um, get right in the future, but not for now. So on the pull, all I'm doing is that on the right hand over and over again, and then changing the bellows. So you should hopefully start to see that there is a sense in the way the chords are set with the right hand buttons in order to uh, make sure you've got a good chance of finding the right notes to harmonize or to, to uh, be sympathetic with both hands. So um, this hand, G, is obviously going to fit with the G. Um, pulling is not going to sound bad either. For the classical musicians, if you know Petrushka, Stravinsky sets out to get that sort of a, uh, effect from the orchestra. Anyway, um, uh, this time I'm going to ask you with the left hand to work round the chords. The only chord we're going to leave out for the moment is uh, C, which is push down here. We're not going to worry about that, but we are going to look at A, pull, then G. Remember, you can do it in two ways, but up here it's the push. And then F, remember, it's down here on the pull. Of course, it's also on the push as well, but we want it on the pull. Why? Well, here's why. Because we're playing those three notes. And if I reverse it, this hand still plays F. But this hand's now working on... Uh, there's nothing wrong with that in, in the right context. You might want to resolve it but we want the F on the pull. Uh, if you can hear anything in the background, it's my daughter practicing the flute. Um, so, we're going to work around the buttons. To G on the push. To F on the pull. And then we're going to jump back up to where the A buttons are, but we're going to push this time, which takes us to E. A minor. Push G, pull F, push E, and again, push G, pull F, push E. So you've got to, you've got to go to there. Starts on the pull, on the push, on the pull, on the push. And that's one called for me that it's better in tune with more air than less air. Okay, so we're going to do um, four of each with the right hand. Push G. Pull F. 
compositional point of view, when you've repeated things a few times, you might want to break out of the pattern. So that's why there, instead of playing... Again, I played... Push G. Pull F. So this time I'm just playing three buttons in a row, which is an A minor chord. It obviously fits perfectly with A minor bass. This time keep the same buttons here, push, so I've come back to the G row, three buttons in a row. And it's G, D, B, so first inversion G chord, fits perfectly. Now the A minor chord over in F is going to give us a lovely F major 7 chord. And over the E, the, uh, the B, D, G is going to give us an E uh, minor 7 chord. So, here we go, just pulling the chord. To G. To F. Uh, so, uh, it's just the melody. Push G. Pull F. Push E. Now, that note is where we want our first finger to be. So we can hop up, or you can play those notes with the to uh, three, four, five fingers to keep your A finger in the right place. That's up to you. So, so we've just had our E. Using all the weak fingers, or you can jump. I'm going to use the weak fingers. start to feel some um, control like that. Not all the notes will work on that. Um, before uh, I close this video, I just wanted to show you one other thing. We've been working on G on the push. You'll find that in French music, sometimes the G is on the pull, which is all the way down the bottom outside row. And then F is also on the pull. And you can see we're using a lot more bellows. And then back to E. Okay, so that's one last thing to practice. And as you come back on the E, I want you to start to get used to using the air button. So, just pushing in my thumb a tiny bit. It's really hard. If you release it too much, you get an airy sound. And that's just so if you are playing French stuff and you run out of bellows, you can get back in quickly. Okay, so this time, I'm going to play, but uh, it won't. This is what it sounds like on a push G. This is what it sounds like on a pull G. So this doesn't change, and we get this lovely tension between the hands, which releases when we go to F. And then to E. G on the pull. 
F on the pull. E on the push. G on the pull. F on the pull. E on the push. So that's a different sort of tension because we have the the A's and C's here, which work great on the A and the F chords, but over the G chord, there's some tension, which is where one of the great uh, uh, French uh, sound comes from. Okay, I hope that's some use.